This is the new 1000 watt uh, four speaker stereo system made by uh, Shark Motorcycle Audio and uh, it's supposed to have uh, detachable four channel amplifier, waterproof loudspeakers built in AFM Bluetooth with external antenna, uh, up down scan tuning system, uh, huge LC display for FM to station all audio input information. Actually the display is not huge. I don't know what they consider huge but you'll see here in a second. Uh, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary USB SD uh, slot inputs and everything you need to wire to both uh, for wireless and remote controllers suitable for 12 volt motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, scooters, snow bike and yachts etc. Let's open it up and see what's on the inside. This is the way it came packaged. I wasn't really impressed with the way it was uh, bundled inside. Everything loose flopped around. You can see on some of the packaging here where the uh, other items are chafed on the, the plastic but doesn't appear to be any damage to uh, any of the components. This is their huge LCD display here. It's got a little protective cover on it. Just a piece of plastic like you get on your phone or iPod or whatever. And all the buttons and whatnot, USB and SD slot. And on the, um, the other side you have the outputs for your speakers, antenna input and the, uh, the power input. Let's see what else we have here. Four speakers. They all uh, all the same. I took this one out and looked at it earlier. And then the uh, RCA type uh, connector to go to the uh, the amp unit there. And this little guy is supposed to be a thousand watt. We'll see what really happens and how how loud it is. So I'm gonna cut cut away for a second. Unbox everything connected up with a bench for a bench test with a battery charger. Hook it up to an audio source and see how it sounds before we uh, mount it on my uh, can amp side by side. All right, I've got everything unpackaged and uh, hooked up, and I failed to show you that inside was the uh, mounting brackets with uh, the hardware. It looks like an extra fuse in there. Uh, also was the uh, wireless re remote that uses infrared. And let me find the, the end of it here. The wired remote. Some mess of wires tangled up here on the table. And this allows you to uh, go between the different settings, control it uh, from your handlebars, wherever you want to mount this thing. So you don't have to use the infrared and it plugs in directly to the uh, unit here in the back. And uh, so you have the Bluetooth input here, or a connection for antenna. There's the antenna there. Uh, they're they're the both the same thread type and whatnot. So if you had two antennas, you could uh, connect it there. Uh, it's for the remote uh, right speaker and the front rear, whatever you want to call it, left uh, front and rear. And then you have on the other side the uh, input for your auxiliary hooked to your phone, iPod, iPad, whatever you have, and then the USB and SD port. The uh, factory auxiliary cable that came with it. Only uh, the left speakers functioned with it. It was just static and a, and a drone coming out of the uh, other one. So I had an auxiliary cable here at the house. Uh, I tried here, and that's what it's running off now. It works just fine on all four speakers. Don't know what the deal is. If the jacks don't go in far enough, or this is just cheap, cheap crap uh, cable that they sent with it. So we'll see what happens. I might even send an email to the company and figure out what's going on with it. So we have all four speakers set up in the background, and. Uh, they're, they're plugged in and functioning properly. I've got it running from the phone right now. And um, the volume's turned up on about 25 of 30 on the uh, unit there. So my phone's turned uh, pretty low. And bring it on up. Halfway. And uh, so this thing is, is pretty, pretty loud for what it is. You know, it's not a, a competition type unit. It's just good riding music for your bike, your ATV, your UTV, whatever you have. And uh, it'll be pretty loud, especially for me. I'm mounted on the roll bar, and I have four speakers pointed in the direction of the, uh, the two passengers. So I'm not worried about the uh, how loud it is. And I'd imagine on a motorcycle riding down a highway at, at 70, if you had all those going plenty loud, you'd, you'd hear it well enough. Um, first impressions of it. It's uh, well built. I like it. Um, I've seen some bad reviews on online about it, even a video to uh, on YouTube that uh, were kind of bashing. I figured I'd give it a try, see what happens. The worst, you know, I had to send it back and try to get a refund. And uh, part two, you'll see on my channel, it'll be installed on a Can Am, and I'll go over the uh, installation on how I did there. Uh, so the mode 
Push that once. Goes to the radio. And that's for a Bluetooth connection, which it was connected to my phone earlier. It might even pick it back up, and you go again. It's weird. I can't get it to go directly to the uh, the front source. It only wants to cycle between Bluetooth and uh, radio. Um, if I want to go back to this front input, I have to uh, restart and uh, turn it back on. Now I haven't tried the uh, remote unit. Let's see what that does. Let me turn this thing down. Now it's connected to the Bluetooth. I don't know where that music's coming from. It's her phone or my iPad. Turn it down here a little bit so it's not. Let's see. Let's try the mode here. Just do a little experiment. MP3, Bluetooth. Now let's turn the volume up down. Okay, wrong button maybe. Off. And this makes funny sounds because I have it connected to a, a battery charger when it starts up. So it takes the, the battery charger a second to kick out some power uh, to as this thing demands the unit. So if it was connected to a normal battery, it'd be just fine. So there's the audio input uh, on the front here. Hit play on the phone. Okay, that, that song just happened to be what was random coming up on the uh, shuffle there. So there you go. Take it for what it is. Uh, I'm going to try it and I think it's going to work out just fine and uh, thanks for watching.